All right, welcome back to another Ready Player Me in Unity VRIK demo. I don't know, we're on part four maybe. Um, so what we're gonna do this time is set up some animations and you can go to Mixamo.com, get free animations. But I love this Everyday Motion Pack. I don't even remember when or where I picked it up. Maybe it was in a Humble Bundle or a Unity sale or something. But I love this thing. It's got a lot of great little animations in it and it makes it a whole lot easier for me than having to upload avatars to mix them all the time or download things down. I mean, sure, I could create a directory on my computer with a bunch of animations, but this is just super convenient. I love this everyday motion pack. It's got a lot of great stuff in it that you can use. Um, I'll put a link in the description with a little affiliate link if you're interested in supporting the channel. Um, otherwise, just search everyday motion pack in Unity, but click the link in the description so I get money. Okay, let's, so let's import this package and I'll show you some of these animations. All right, so I got a boatload of animations in my project now. All right, so we're gonna go back to our base layer here, <clears throat> and I am going to um, basically get rid of it, all those things in my base layer, and I'm going to create a new blend tree. And I'm just gonna call this blend tree, uh, let me go back to my base layer, let's call this blend tree movement. All right, and in my movement, um, I think I'm just gonna have two animations. So on the blend tree, I'm gonna add, um, two motion fields and my first motion field. Um, so this is, you can see I have a bazillion animations in here. This is from the everyday motion pack. There's female animations and there's male animations. The difference is the female moves her hips a bit more. Um, so I'm going to do male idle. So there's lots of male um, idle options. Uh, I'm going to choose male. I oh, that's female. I want to choose male idle breathe, but I want the one that's not in the FBX file. I think uh, well, I might just go ahead and do it. I think you don't want to access animations that are in an FBX. I think you might have issues down the road, I've heard. Um, so generally, you'd like want to duplicate it and get it out of the FBX, but I'm just going to go ahead for now and keep it in the FBX. I think it'll be fine. Let's see what happens. And then I want to add, um, I'm just going to do a simple one. If you really want to have a nice blend tree, you would have move forward, move backward, move left, move right, and like move at an angle because those animations will look like slightly different for each. But um, male, move, um, walk, front should be what I want. There we go. Male, move, walk, front. Now this one does have an animation outside the FBX, so I am going to pick that one. All right, and uh, we need to have a parameter. We're not using the HMD rotation parameter. We are going to be using a magnitude parameter. So I'm going to come back over here to parameters. I'm going to create a new one. It's going to be a float, and it's going to be magnitude. All right, <clears throat> so on my blend tree, I'm going to be an idle from um, zero to one and then walking from one or greater. Um, if you have more than this, generally you might want to uncheck automate threshold so you can put your own threshold there. In fact, um, in some um, blend trees, you might even have some like empty states. Um, no, cancel that. You might even have some empty states. You can add a motion field and just keep it empty. So like, let's say you want nothing to happen until after the magnitude's at 0.5. You can, you can do that and it'll work. Um, but for this case scenario, I'm not being super picky. Um, we're just going to breathe from zero and then at one, we'll start walking. All right. So um, that should be it for that. So now we go to our player and let's, uh, you know what? We need a, something to walk on. So let's let's create a cube. All right, um, a cube. You know what? Did I turn my mic on? Mic check, mic check. Yes, okay. All right, so this cube, um, we're just going to zero it out and then I'm going to scale it 10 on the X and 10 on the Z. And then um, the Y, we're going to bump down to, I think, minus 0.5. That's rotation, minus 0.5. And there we go. Our character's floating right on top nicely there. And you know what, let's make that even bigger. Um, let's do this as 20 and 20, a little bit more room. And um, then my player, we need to add a, we already have the player input on there. We don't have a character controller, so let's do that. Um, character controller, superb. Um, and just to see what's going on there, we can go up to analysis in the window and go to physics debugger and where'd it go? It's on the screen. Oh, you know what? It's on my other screen. All right. Bring the physics debugger here and turn on gizmos and you can see, geez, 
let's turn off uh, 3D icons. All right, so you can see that blue, that's basically the collider that comes with the character controller. Um, and we, <laughs> that's not gonna work for us. So we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna center this um, one higher. And that's like too much, but also my height. So that's, there's also, that's also the skin width. So there we go, the, the green is our controller. But then there's like this skin width, which I don't fully understand skin width to tell you. Um, um, a lot of times I like to set my skin width to near zero. Um, it's not really reflecting here, but if you have skin width, it'll actually kind of make you hover off the ground a bit. It's like room for, I don't know, it's really hard to tell. Maybe this blue is the step offset. I don't think it is though. Yeah, that's not changing anything. Minimum move distance, maybe? I don't know. All right, but um, I do want to make it to where I'm not quite so fat. So I'm going to bring the radius down. I like to do it like at the shoulders or just inside. Um, that's pretty good there. And um, it's not quite going to my head, which is kind of surprising because I'm at 2. And normally, I go 1.8. Is my avatar like bigger than 6 feet? Um... Oh, you know what? I did not move my RPM avatar back outside the origin. I hope it didn't break my IK. Um, it's scaled right. All right, interesting. All right, so we're just going to take this and let's make my height, I don't know, probably 2.1. But then when you do that, oh, you know what? I'm looking at the blue. I'm not looking at the green. Yeah, you see the collider is extra high and that's fine. Maybe we wear a hat or something. We won't clip in. So let's just keep it. Let's just keep it right there. All right. <clears throat> So now we have our character controller. So now we can come over here to Playmaker and we need to create a movement FSM. Um, so this would be a movement script if you're doing it in C sharp. And um, I need to make sure I have the state selected. Uh, we already have something here. We're, oh, this is our, this is our uh, HMD to toe rotation FSM. All right, let's do a new FSM. Where did I add the other FSM to? Who knows? It's a miracle. It's a it's a it's a mystery. This is going to be our movement FSM. All right, and so to get our movement, we're just going to get player input. This is the wonderful um, player input get move vector. Got to love the new input system, and the input action we want is X R I. Uh, no, I'm just to search move. There we go. And I'm going to be doing movement with my left hand on my controller. All right. <clears throat> and that should be good. We're going to want to do it relative to our camera. Go back to the player. Let's lock it on here. Uh, we'll do it relative to our camera. And um, our multiplier, one is pretty slow. I'm going to set it to two. Actually, I'm going to set it to one for now because I set up my animator for the magnitude and I set my magnitude for one. So this is going to be magnitude. All right, we're gonna store the move vector. And um, we're also gonna set our animator float. And we need to specify that our animator is on our avatar. And the parameter that we are doing is magnitude. And we're gonna set the value of magnitude to magnitude. And we're gonna be doing that every frame. And then we're not moving yet. We have a move vector, but we're not moving yet. So let's actually controller move. And we're gonna do controller simple move. I'm not planning on doing any jumping yet. And we're going to move the actual player itself. And then the move vector is move vector. And here you can control how fast. So that would really kind of work for us now. Yeah, I can I can go faster now if I want to. Um, and I think world space is what we want. So um, this might be enough. So let's see what happens. Um, I lost my, my HMD. All right, I have the headset on. Um, I'm not going to put it on my eyes because I still don't have my head. But... Uh, my arms are still jacked up for some reason. I don't know what I did with that. Um, hold on, let me come in here. Reset view. Oh, I think I know what my problem is. Because um, I'm so low. But still, it's turned slightly. Isn't it turned? I don't know why. It's probably just the way that I'm linked up to my computer. But it's something's off with one of my targets. See, I'm way over there. These should be in front of me. All right, I'm looking in the headset in front of me, but they're totally twisted to my side. So I'm just, it's jacked up, but it would be better on build. But um, as you can see, uh, I can't move. 
Why can't I move? Maybe you all caught this when I set this up, but for some reason my parameters, I still set my parameter to HMD rotation. Let's change it to magnitude. Um, looks like I'm going to have to uh, play and restart. All right, hopefully uh, the color change in my sweater didn't shock you. It's the next day. It's when I got a chance to get back to this video. And um, real quick, easy fix about why it wasn't taking my input. Just on the player input, double click on it and go to left hand locomotion because that's the action that we're using. And go to move, click on this. And this was unchecked. So I'm going to go ahead and check it because um, I'm not using the continuous move control scheme. I'm just using generic XR controller, I guess. Um, so yeah, I checked that and then it's working. So I come in here, I hit play. All right, so here we go. And forward, backward, forward, backward. All right, so there we go, we're moving. Um, you also, I think there's a, a built-in um, XR continuous how about move. There's the continuous move provider action base. So um, if you don't use Playmaker and you don't want to use Playmaker, you just want something to work, the continuous move provider basically just does it for you. Um, but I like to have full control. And this is how I program games is with Playmaker. All right, so um, before we go any further, um, that's about all I was going to show in this video was just how to make your character move. Um, before we go any further, let's get the game windows down here in the bottom right. As you can see, I'm looking on the inside of my head. All right. Um, also, I'm wearing a helmet now. If you forget from early, the, the early episodes, um, I had hidden some of these from the scene view. Um, but what I want to do is I want to create a new layer. I'm just going to call this layer Cull, C-U-L-L. -L. And then on my eyes, my face, my glasses, my head, my headwear, and my teeth, I'm going to put it all on this Cull layer. And then on my main camera, I'm going to go to the culling mask and I'm going to undo cull. Um, be careful whenever you do cull layers and you add new layers um, because this was set on everything and now it's not set on everything. So if I create new layers and um, anything on those new layers will become invisible to my camera. So just keep that in mind whenever you start messing with the culling mask there. If you add new layers, you probably got to make sure that you have them visible to the camera. All right, so now you can see down here in the bottom right, that's our game view now. I'm no longer looking at the inside of my head. If I hit play, all right, see, so you can see where I'm looking. If I look down, I can still see my arm and my legs and my body and whatnot, but I'm not looking on the inside of my head anymore. All right, so that's something you'll want to set up. <clears throat> um, if you're doing multiplayer, you'll have to set up some code to uh, do that only if it's your player. Otherwise, you'll be walking around the world to other players with no head. <laughs> All right, so that's the end for this video. Um, in the next video, I don't know what we're going to talk about because I've forgotten what we've talked about already, but it'll be something cool still related to Ready Player Me. So stay tuned for the next bit coming up.